Good morning, and welcome to Commencement Exercises. Accompanied by the high school band, under the direction of Brian Sincata, please welcome the Hingham High School class of 2022.
please stand for the national anthem, which will be sung by the senior members of the HHS chorus, accompanied by the high school band. Seniors, you're now welcome to sit and relax. Good morning, and welcome to all of you. My name is Rick Swanson. I'm the principal here at Hingham High School. It's a pleasure to welcome all of you, parents, other family members, friends, teachers, and most of all, our graduates, to the commencement exercises for the Hingham High School class of 2022. I'm joined here on the field by a host of dignitaries who represent both the school administration and our local government. I'm especially pleased to welcome every member of our school committee, including the chair, Michelle Ayer, Vice Chair, Ness Parenti, Terry Nee, Jen Benham, Tim Miller-Dempsey, Allison Anderson, and Matt Cosme. We're also joined today by two members of our Board of Selectmen, Liz Klein and Bill Ramsey, our superintendent of schools, Dr. Gary Maestas, our assistant superintendent, Dr. James Labilowa, our director of student services, Dr. Suzanne Vinnis, our business director, John Ferris, assistant principals, Jennifer Henriksen and Nicole Piantes, and many members of our faculty. A special thank you is in order to Dr. Maestas alongside us today for his first, but also final graduation ceremony at Hingham High School. We were very fortunate this year that Dr. Maestas came out of retirement to serve Hingham Public Schools as our interim superintendent. He brought expertise, skill, and grace to the role, and we're all grateful for his many contributions to our school district. We also extend our gratitude to our business director, John Ferris, who will retire next month after more than a decade of tireless and excellent service to Hingham Public Schools. And finally, a salute to Mrs. Henriksen, who will soon read the names of our graduates for the 19th and final time as assistant principal. In just a few short weeks, Mrs. Henriksen will retire after 26 years at our school, the last 19 of them as an administrator which we believe makes her the longest tenured assistant principal in our school's history. <laughs> Mrs. Henriksen grew up in Hingham, attended this school, she taught here, and has become the unofficial keeper of our school's proud history. Thank you, Mrs. Henriksen, for serving your alma mater so well and for so long. Today's graduation marks a major milestone in the lives of the young people seated before us. 
all 312 of them. The high school experience of this class was unlike any that came before. Today, as these seniors receive their diplomas, we're emerging from the most difficult and sustained period of trial any of us has faced. For the rest of our lives, these past few years will stand out from all the rest, and often for reasons we might prefer to forget. The same cannot be said, though, about the Hingham High School class of 2022. The young people assembled on this field are equally memorable, but in ways that are much more positive. Individually, they can take great pride in their accomplishments. Collectively, they have established a reputation for unity, hard work, spirit, perseverance, resilience, and service. With regard to service, there are countless examples, but none more powerful than those students who have elected to serve our country in the military. I'd like to invite the five of them to stand when I call their names as outstanding examples of that call to service. First, soon to enlist in the U.S. Air Force, Catherine Bernard. Enlisting in the U.S. Army National Guard, Zachary Fetterman. Also enlisting in the U.S. Army National Guard, Jasper Henley. Also enlisting in the U.S. Army National Guard, Will Hopkins. And with an appointment to the United States Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland, Ella Niehoff. Their willingness to serve and to sacrifice self-interest should be a model for all of us. And indeed, they share much in common with others in the class of 2022. These seniors have faced a series of significant challenges. The transition to remote learning, the cancellation of so many school events during the pandemic, and most difficult of all, the loss of a beloved classmate. But they never surrendered to despair. To the contrary, they provided essential leadership as our school has made its way back, reclaiming cherished traditions and creating some new ones. In doing so, they have advanced the mission of our school and reaffirmed its highest values. They have won both our respect and our affection. Seniors, you've done much to earn it. The striving, the effort, the self-discovery, so much of that growth has happened right here on this campus, in the classroom and on the stage, even when the stage became a computer screen, in the art room, the science labs, the library, the language lab, and the music rooms, even when the music room became a tent, during practices and rehearsals, while attending early morning club meetings, and while staying late for extra help even when that extra help had to be delivered on Zoom, on bus rides to away games, and on the long walk to the far parking lot. So many of those essential moments happened right here. As your class gathers here today for a final time, if Hingham High School has fulfilled its promise to you, then you now understand the world and you understand yourself in powerful ways. But that's not all. If our school has truly fulfilled its mission, then you now recognize and believe something even greater. Your education was not only about understanding the world, but also, more importantly, about developing your capacity to improve the world. Class of 2022, as you gather this one last time, look at the teachers assembled behind the podium. Look around you at the classmates who have been loyal friends and steadfast companions. Look up into the bleachers where you will surely find the people who love you more deeply than they could possibly say. 
We're all counting on you to help move us closer to the kind of genuine community we all want. And you personify the hope that we might actually get there one day. So as you move beyond the sturdy foundation you've built here, in a place you can always call home, answer that call to continue making a difference and in ever more powerful ways. As our presence here today illustrates, and as this ceremony affirms, it's your turn. Thank you very much. And now the chair of our school committee, Michelle Ayer. Thank you, Mr. Swanson. Good morning, everyone. I am so incredibly honored to be here today representing the Hingham School Committee as you confirm diplomas to the Hingham High School class of 2022. Looking out at the joyful faces of these graduates, I see all the possibilities that are ahead for you. And as I was thinking about what to say today, I was reminded of a poem written by suffragist activist Lavinia Dock. The poem was called, The Young Are At The Gate. It's a poem that demands the voices of the young be heard and recognizes that the young are the force that will upend old ways of thinking. And when I read it, I was reminded of you, the class of 2022, here today at this gate, this moment of graduation. And probably because I'm no longer one of the young, the poem also reminded me of all the people who have led you to this gate. The people who read to you, who cared for you when you were sick, who made sure you got to school on time, who fed you, helped you with your homework, drove you to games and performances, competitions and tournaments, cleaned up after you, mowed the lawn, shoveled the snow, built swing sets, taught you to drive, took you on amazing trips, got you a dog. And this doesn't even include the things your parents, guardians, and families did for you. <laughs> because in addition to all the amazing ways your family supported you, there are hundreds of people who dedicate themselves to delivering you to this moment to this gate. Teachers, custodians, bus drivers, librarians, food service workers, nurses, administrators, principals, administrative assistants, coaches, department heads, paraeducators, crossing guards, school resource officers, tutors, counselors. All of these folks believed in you, supported you, and they will miss you, but it's their role to leave you at this gate. And here you are, the young at the gate. Open it. The world is waiting for you, class of 22. To deliver the address of the salutatorian, Matthew Carr. Thirteen years ago, at the ripe age of five, our educational journeys commenced in kindergarten. Some entered the school brimming with confidence, others with nervous optimism, me with tears streaming down my face due to the realization I would have far less time to devote to Mario Kart. <laughs> at that young age, 2022 felt eons away, a seemingly endless journey to graduation. Yet here we are, nearly halfway to 40. As such, I would like to extend a huge congratulations to my classmates. The journey was long and hard, with enough potholes to rival Pleasant Street, but we made it. <laughs> to the staff and teachers, I thank you for your endless work to make Hingham High a wonderful and supportive learning environment. To my classmates and family, I thank you for the encouragement you have given me over the years. To the band performing today, thank you for all your pomp and circumstance. 
and to the far parking lot, I thank you for giving me the motivation to wake up at 6.30 every day to make sure I got a spot in the close lot. <laughs> Our high school experience has been unexpected and to use the 2020's word of the year, unprecedented. In Dodgeball, a true underdog story, accomplished and acclaimed coach Patches O'Houlihan observes, if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. From Shakespeare to school fires, from freshman year biology to epidemiology lessons only a global pandemic can provide, the world has thrown plenty of wrenches our way over the past four years. Yet we have marched on, undeterred, fully embracing the five Ds of dodgeball. We dodged, ducked, dipped, dove, and dodged every single wrench that came our way, displaying great adaptability and resilience. When we returned to school in the fall of 2020, we came back re-energized and determined, reconnecting with our peers and re-establishing our communities. In the classroom, on the field, and on the stage, we went straight to work and put in performances to be proud of. As we set off on our new journey to college, the military, or the workforce, we are destined to face more wrenches and perhaps, if we're really lucky, some good old plain dodgeballs. And based on our success to date, I'm sure we will dodge those too. Our responses to these challenges will inform our reaction to future ones. We will persevere, even if our journey is not linear, pain-free, or as expected. In fact, many times our ideas of how our lives will and should play out are derailed. Last week, I received a letter from my sixth grade self. According to him, I was destined to be a soccer star studying at Yale. <laughs> I regret to inform you that I am neither. <laughs> Nevertheless, I thank my sixth grade self for being ambitious and believing in me. Without that self-optimism and belief, I do not think I would be standing before you today. In a similar vein, a pandemic disrupting our high school experience was probably not on anyone's 2020 2021 or 2022 bingo card. For anyone starting on the 2023 bingo card, keep that in mind when filling it out. <laughs> it is easy to fall into a mental spin of what ifs. What if I joined more clubs or what if I studied harder? But I don't believe these what ifs are productive. As season three winner of the Great British Baking Show, John Waite remarked as disaster struck with his bake, what is done is done and cannot be undone. I suggest we live a life of, oh well, what's next, rather than what if. We can acknowledge and more in these alternative and parallel realities, but do not allow them to distract you from appreciating and engaging with the present. Master Uguay puts it best. Yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift. That's why they call it the present. We sit here today about to receive our diplomas, about to begin a new chapter in our stories. It's hard to find words to describe how we should approach the moment, but I think we can look to the highly revered philosopher, Justin Timberlake's teachings. <laughs> As he so eloquently puts it, come on, let's give it a whirl. <laughs> Thanks everyone, and congratulations to the class of 2022. Please welcome the class valedictorian, Dominic Cantor. Testing, testing. All right, just checking that I'm not on mute. If you didn't find that funny, that's all right. That's why I'd be the class dad and certainly not the class clown. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Dominic Cantor and I'd like to begin by thanking the many people who made today and our entire high school journey possible. Thank you to Mr. Swanson, Ms. Henriksen and Mrs. Piantes for leading our school. Thank you to the custodians for keeping our school clean and to the school committee and the PTO for keeping the school set up for success. A massive thank you to all of the teachers for all that you did for us students day in and day out. Finally, thank you to all of our parents and caregivers for supporting us. 
And on a more personal note, I'd like to thank my own parents who taught me how to be an adult and shaped me into the person I am today. I'd like to also recognize and thank the members of our class who will be entering the armed forces to protect our freedom. I also wish to express my appreciation to all those in the audience today who have served or are currently serving our country. I'd also like to shout out the medical professionals and first responders for all that they have done to help us get through these last few years. Thank you to the band, which plays every year at graduation. As a band student, all right. As a band student myself, I've spent a couple graduations playing from those seats right over there, and I've heard a number of graduation speeches. From them, I've learned there are two really important elements of a good graduation speech, humility and brevity. With that being said, I promise to keep this speech short and to not tell you all my entire life story. Four years ago, we walked through those doors as high school students for the very first time. For all of us, freshman year was an adjustment. Some of us adjusted well, and others threw up in history class during the Black Plague simulation. <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> when it came to adapting to high school life, resilience was required of us. When COVID grasped the country, resilience was demanded of us. Some of you may know that I'm half British, and I'm sure many of my classmates know that I'm a bit of a history nerd. The logical intersection of those two facts is Winston Churchill. He famously said, if you're going through hell, keep going. I'm not gonna say that high school was hell, but our four years sure weren't all sunshine and rainbows. However, we just kept going. We made it through an ordinary first year except that little fire in the 280s, the following year was cut short by COVID, which forced our junior year to be mostly centered around hybrid learning. This year started with masks before coming full circle and finally returning to a more ordinary school experience. Despite this roller coaster ride, we managed to navigate our way to today. We even made fond memories in the face of this adversity, sprinting to the CAF on Calzone Day, dressing up in crazy gear during Spirit Weeks, and making use of our beautiful field on Breathe Out Day. Ultimately, we've each taken our own journey to this moment as academics, musicians, artists, actors, athletes, and club leaders. We will always remember Anna, a treasured member of our class who did not get the chance to be here today. As we each go on our own path from here on, let's honor Anna's spirit and strive to be kind, humble, grateful, and resilient. Again, to all of our friends and family and anyone who has supported us, thank you. And to all of my classmates, congratulations, and I wish you all the very best in the future. Thank you. And next, a student speaker chosen by a vote of teachers, administrators, and fellow students, L. Kavanaugh. For those of you not familiar with me and my writing style, as I call it, I tend to not begin writing my essays until the night before it's due. No matter how hard I try, I always seem to find myself at 8 p.m. on a Thursday night searching for direct quotations and setting a timer because that's the only way I can focus. So, full disclosure, Ms. Roth, I might have fabricated a little in those metacogs since I was definitely not brainstorming throughout the week like I consistently promised you I was. When I'm speed writing an essay the night before it's due, I start by writing a rough draft for a thesis. Although high school presented many challenges and obstacles, the lessons learned and opportunities gained along the way proved indispensable to the class of 2022. I told you, it's rough. But this thesis outlines and provides at least some structure to my paper. 
after attempting to weave in an extended metaphor throughout my introduction, I move on to my body paragraphs. My first body paragraph covers all the challenges we have faced, both individually as humans and collectively as a class. Maybe I write about how Mr. Woolley's VHS ta tape caught fire and shut the school down our freshman year. The obvious one to address is COVID and all the mental health struggles, grief, and exhaustion that came with the pandemic. But we know that those challenges didn't necessarily originate there. Starting our freshman year, we are thrown into a rigorous school environment where sports are prioritized, arts are encouraged, after school jobs are recommended, and grades are everything. We are provided with, student, with support systems of family, friends, teachers, counselors, coaches, and more, and they all expect us to be great. And knowing that all those people believe in us is reassuring and uplifting and very encouraging, but sometimes that pressure can be a lot. Considering all these factors, I'm really proud of all of us for what we have achieved, as it certainly hasn't been easy. Going into our junior year, our community tragically lost Anna Quinlevin. Learning that Anna had passed was a heartbreaking moment for her friends, family, teachers, peers, and the community as a whole. We have been holding tight to her memory, but she should be here graduating with all of us today. We miss you, Anna, and today we all wear a teal ribbon for you. I then elaborate on everything HHS has gifted us. I rave about teachers like Mr. Halflin, who taught us how to write purposefully and passionately, and Mr. Raymond, who encouraged us to not blindly accept the status quo. I describe the li lively art and music scene and brag about all the titles our athletics teams bring home. I write about how the school actively encourages individualism and accountability and cautions us away from conformity and ignorance. I share about how HHS has helped foster a sense of community and enthusiasm, especially during the times when we needed it the most. At this point, I might also revise my thesis to better reflect my message. Although the class of 2022 faced adversity throughout their four years at Hingham High School, the lessons taught and opportunities bestowed provided students with a sense of purpose and spirit that will prove beyond useful for years to come. I then begin to wrap up with the conclusion that effectively ties together the essay. It's in this final paragraph that I'll maybe offer an unsolicited and vaguely applicable Taylor Swift quote, or maybe a cliche about growing up. Or maybe I'll just end by congratulating my classmates and reminding us all once again that we are capable of so much and I'm so proud of what we have accomplished over the past four years. And hey, I was voted most likely to return and work at HHS, <laughs> so this might not be the last you'll see of me. <laughs> so to my classmates, thank you for that and for being the best classmates I could ask for. Class of 2022, we did it. Our final speaker this morning is the president of the class of 2022, Luke McDonald. Thanks, Mr. Crane. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and thank you all for coming. Thank you first to Mr. Swanson for helping all of us get here and for being a great role model. And thank you, Ms. Piantis, Mrs. Henriksen, and the teachers at this school for all they've done for us since freshman year. And to my classmates, I never thought that our graduation day would come as quickly as it did, but I'm still grateful for the past four years. I believe that this class has made a conscious effort, especially recently, to leave this high school a better, more inclusive place than it was when we came in as freshmen. And for this, I'm proud to have been able to, have been able to hold my position and witness this effort. I'm also proud of what this class has done in the past year to remember Anna Quinlivan. We lost her two years ago, but since then, we've not allowed her memory to fade. A couple of weeks ago, we hosted the dog walk here, uh, where we gathered a large crowd to walk through Wombatuck as a way to honor Anna and commemorate her love for dogs. And just last week, we dedicated a bench in front of the school to Anna uh, to ensure that her legacy will never, never be forgotten. This bench will sit in front of Hangamai forever, and future students will walk by and see her name on this bench every day. So for helping eternalize the memory of Anna at this school, I thank all of you.
I started to consider running for a position like this back in eighth grade, but I realized on the grade wide field trip to Washington DC when the hotel lobby erupted in boat noises that maybe trying to control the chaos that was our grade would take too much effort. <laughs> and then when we moved up to the high school, the building literally went up in flames. So I thought to myself, maybe I'll wait one more year until everything calms down. <laughs> Turns out I had to wait two years because of the whole global pandemic issue, but I knew I wanted to hold this position going into junior year. And junior, year, junior and senior years were a success because we were finally able to have fundraisers and class activities all together again, and because intelligent, hardworking people already held the positions as the other cost officers. Events like the holiday fair, at which I think all 300 seniors made their debut on the class Instagram, were the reason why I originally ran for office. And although I, and although I enjoyed people telling me throughout this year to fix the school lunches and to, and to give us a senior skip day every Friday, <laughs> I was happier to witness the whole grade together at events. I've heard mixed reviews from classmates regarding le leaving Hingham to go to college, some saying they can't wait to start a new chapter in their life, and others saying that they're sad it's over. And none of us will go on to do the same exact thing, but we will all have this in common. Being from Hingham will be shared by few people that you will spend, with, spend time with next year, and it will be something to take pride in. It will be important to remember that only we grew up with the Dominic Cantor, <laughs> and who will be attending a small school in Cambridge, Mass next year, for those of you who aren't aware. <laughs> Sorry, Dom, I had to say it. <laughs> Remembering that we all started here in Hingham will prove to be useful to us in our futures in other ways as well. No matter how chaotic our lives will be, Hingham will always be a constant but also will serve as a reminder of the abilities we will have to impact the people and places around us. The privileges that this class has had, specifically our wonderful town, school, and teachers, have provided each of us with opportunities that are shared by a minority of other young adults. Every day we come to a school that strives for inclusion, safety, and equity, knowing that we will receive a high quality education. And I know all of you have heard endless times that we are lucky to live in Hingham, but recognizing this privilege is only the first step in a longer process that will end up benefiting more than just us here in this town. To be more clear, I would like to relate to you a lesson from the Bible that was made relevant again in the 20th century by Rose Kennedy, the mother of nine children, including JFK and Robert Kennedy. From those to whom much is given, much is expected. It would be easy to, continu to continue to college next year and live passive lives enjoying a new place. Instead of this, we owe it to our town, school, and teachers to embrace the enjoyment of college, yes, but also to be active members of our respective communities. What our town has provided for us these past four years, we are capable of providing to the places we visit and where we live in the future. This capability is a privilege, and it is our right to impart to other communities the values we embraced here, those consisting of safety, inclusion, and equity. I'd like to conclude by sharing with you all a few detail details from a letter that I received from my sixth grade teacher last week. And similar to Matt, uh, this letter I wrote to myself, explained what I hoped to accomplish by the next time I read the letter. I wrote that after graduating high school, I'd attend a near Ivy League caliber school and be on my way to be, uh, becoming a professional golfer. I literally told myself to not worry because I would never have to work a normal desk job. <laughs> so yes, it's safe to say that I was a confident sixth grader. And although these goals did not quite become reality as I unfortunately will not be playing professional golf, these high standards that I set for myself motivated me to work for the next seven years. We won't always accomplish every single thing we set out for ourselves, but establishing goals like these will force us to view a difficult task as something we are able to attain. And even if we end up not reaching the original goal, other significant accomplishments will be made in the process, and a habit of hard work will be formed that will lead us to be prepared for future tasks. So before you move on to your next year plans, set high objectives that you would like to fulfill, and utilize the privileges that this school has provided so that you can succeed and serve the new communities that you encounter. Thank you for your time today and for my entire high school experience, and I wish all of you the best of luck in the future. Thank you. Dr. Maestas, it gives me great pleasure to certify to you that all those receiving diplomas today have met all the requirements for graduation as established by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and the Hingham School Committee. Graduates, please come forward to receive your diplomas.
way, there appears to be help on the way. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. Mahadi Almasawi. Miguel Alonso Villasierros. Charlotte Andrews. Inga Andruskovich. Zoe Angel. Caitlin Arnold. Madison Aylward. Alexander Bankhead. John Barkley. Alex Barzowskis. Caroline Bastardi. Jake Bednarski. Brennan Beitler. Ian Belkner. Catherine Bernard. Samuel Benyon. Shay Berrigan. <laughs> William Bernstein. <laughs> Perry Blissetti. <laughs> Nathaniel Blundell. Preston Bodner. Camille Bohr. Charlotte Bogan. Ellie Bowles. Mark Botello. <laughs> Fadi Buhadu. <laughs> Ella Bouquet. <laughs> Cecilia Booten. Teal Boyer. Christopher Bradley. Catherine Bradshaw. Jack Brazis. Ethan Brennan. Jack F. Brennan. J. 
Jack W. Brennan. <laughs> Alexandra Briggs. <laughs> Pierce Bromley. Sarah Bryden. Morgan Bazinski. Leo Berm. Sadie Berm. Ava Burnham. <laughs> Billy Burns. <laughs> Ryan Burns. <laughs> Ethan Burt. Francesca Candelieri. Nikolai Cannon. Anna Capitalupo. Andrew Carlton. Bennett Cashman. <laughs> Olivia Cataldo. <laughs> Akravi Kemala. <laughs> Alyssa Chang. Caroline Chase. Benson Chen. Colton Shipman. John Schwery. Haley Serapis. <laughs> Tasman Claridge. <laughs> Taylor Clayton. <laughs> Francis Clifford. Sally Clow. Lauren Kaleri. Emily Conroy. Delaney Coppola. Riley Cotter. Lauren Crawford. Henry Crean. Shea Crean. William Croto. Samuel Crowley.
Catherine Curry. Kaylee Cushing. Camden Sear. Christopher Sear. Brian Delamonte. Owen Darlington. Willa Davis. Dominic DeCola. Joseph DeCola Jr. Angel de Jesus Nunez. Cameron Delaney. Bryce Delmonico. Joseph Delmonico. Laurel Deneen. Alessandra Denning. Isaac Doherty. Peyton Donegan. Colleen Donovan. Brendan Downey. Damian Doyle. Griffin Drinkwater. Henry Drinkwater. Catherine Duff. William Ebbs. Ava Eilson. Madeline Akinis. Thomas Esco. John Fahey. Mason Fairfield. Hannah Fobb. Robert Falvey III. Zachary Fetterman. Catherine Feely. Emma Finnerty. Quinn Fleming. Kate Gallagher. Sean Garrity. Matthew Gates. Sophia Gervasi.
Kyle Gidman. Katie Giordani. Meryl Goodwin. Cameron Goon. Ian Grady. Charles Thatcher Gray. Robert Gray, Jr. Emma Green. Joshua Greenwood. William Griffin. Lillian Grimm. Nathaniel Grimm. Liliana Hagerty. Matthew Hall. Dale Harris, Jr. Connor Hartman. Thomas Healy. Sydney Hemmer. Jasper Henley. Alexandra B. Higgins. Alexandra I. Higgins. Owen Hoffman. Neve Hogan. William Hopkins III. Ava Hutchinson. Kim Hun. Wyatt Ayaria. Lucas Jefford. <laughs> Ashley Jewell. <laughs> Amelia Chang Yu. <laughs> Nicholas Johannes. Colleen Johnston. <laughs> Kelly Jordan. <laughs> Helen Kahn. <laughs> Elsie Canigate. James Canigat. <laughs> Zofia Kelleher. <laughs> Julie Kelly. <laughs> Grace Kelly. Ella Kennedy. Maureen Keenan.
Grace Kondraki. Liam Larkin. Isabella Lavoy. June Lee. Madeline Leary. Ryan Leary. William Liebhart. <laughs> Katori Baird Luwak. <laughs> Jack Libby. <laughs> Ari Locklear. Anthony Longo. Lillian Lovell. Alexander Lombard. Caleb Lombard. Cameron Lombard. <laughs> Chloe Lynch. <laughs> Edward McDonald. <laughs> Mark McDonald. William McLaughlin. <laughs> Amy Maffey. <laughs> Ava McGuire. <laughs> Ryan McGuire. Keegan Mahone. Yeah. Ava Malloy. Yeah. <laughs> William Malloy. Yeah. Avery Marchand. Samuel Marwell. <laughs> Leah May. <laughs> Julie McAllister. <laughs> Stephen McDougall. Miranda McGagan. <laughs> Timothy McKay. <laughs> Dolan McMichael. <laughs> Samuel Melendez. Lila Mercurio. <laughs> 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 
Luke Marion. Jake Monty. Devin Moriarty. Nicholas Morris. Hallie Morton. Megan Moynihan. <laughs> Catherine Mulfer. <laughs> Curtis Murphy. <laughs> Dylan Murphy. Elizabeth Murphy. <laughs> Safe Nasser. <laughs> Natasha Nealon. <laughs> Teeter Neum. Ann Nicholas. <laughs> Eleanor Niehoff. <laughs> Aliyah Nieves. Alexis Nolan. <laughs> Emily O'Connor. <laughs> Nicholas O'Connor. <laughs> Tyler O'Connor. William O'Connor. <laughs> Brindis of Leafson. <laughs> Brian O'Dell. Emmett O'Donnell. <laughs> Marisa O'Malley. <laughs> Agnes O'Reilly. <laughs> Helena Orth. Tyler Jack Pardo. <laughs> Aiden Parker. <laughs> Shrey Patel. Christian Peterson. Emma Peterson. Jack Peterson. John Phillips.
Gabriel Pickard. Yeah. Dylan Pierce. Yeah. Georgia Pilgrim. Yeah. Ella Potter. Jackson Price. <laughs> Mila Renoka. <laughs> Annie Rosso. <laughs> Jonathan Rayburn. Andrew Reed. Yeah. Connor Riley. Yeah. Michaela Riley. Yeah. Owen Richards. Brendan Richardson. Yeah. Macy Roberts. Yeah. John Robinson. Yeah. Aiden Roach. Julia Rocket. Yeah. Ella Ross. Yeah. Emma Ryan. Yeah. Kaylin Ryan. Sarah Ryan. Jonathan St. Ange. Luke St. Pierre. Jared Salem. <laughs> Daniel Salon. <laughs> Devin Sampson. <laughs> Craig Sandler. Cameron Santarelli. <laughs> Haley Sarabia. <laughs> Kate Shembry. Tegan Schnorr. <laughs> Shell Scholand. <laughs> Sophia Scholand. <laughs> Mary. 
May Scott. Luca Scobo. Macy Shape. Olivia Sharkansky. Quentin Sheehan. Walker Shetty. Thomas Chetzline. Sarah Shoemaker. Brandon Silva. Nathaniel Silva. Georgia Smith Rasmussen. Richard Summers. Hayden J. Sousa. Julius Spinola Mendez. Nizia Springer. John Steele. Robert Steele. Lily Steiner. John Sula. Carly Sullivan. Good job, Bobby, right there. William Sullivan. Kyle Sweat. Jackson Tedeschi. Carson Teed. Leah Theophilus. Lillian Thrun. Allison Taccio. Lindsay Triggs. Natalie Ulrich. Evan Vassell. Luis Felipe Vieira. John Volpe. Robert Vanderleft. Colin Breeze. Connor Walsh. Max Wanty.
Avery Warshaw. Elijah Weber. Jade Wegman. Kalina Wilkin. Anna Williams. Catherine Wilson. Kyle Wilson. Mackenzie Wilson. Nora Wolfington. Hingham High School will award an honorary posthumous degree to Anna Quinn Livin. Matthew Carr. <laughs> Dominic Cantor. <laughs> Eleanor Fabro. Alexa Varholak. Neve McGinnis. Charlotte Strachan. Al Kavanaugh. Theodore O'Donnell. <laughs> Isaiah Ader. <laughs> Cara Chippinelli. <laughs> Christopher Hearn. Luke McDonald. Luke, you want to stand back up?
congratulations. Thank you. 